right, so this is a video that I, I think I think this wasn't recommended by anyone. Like nobody asked for this video, but I just wanted to do it because uh, you know it seems cool. If it's not, it has a lot of views. If, if it's not cool, you know, just not out. But yeah, it's five reasons why you shouldn't mess with the USA. And right away, we can see a Soviet map. So you know it's gonna start good. The collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s left the United States as the sole superpower in the world. Yep. And it's never looked back. In all aspects of the world, the United States is indeed a superpower, especially when it comes to its military might, which is unsurpassable in its strength technological superiority, operational capabilities, and uh, power project. Gosh, I mean, I think there's a lot to admire uh, about the country of America and what they've achieved. And yeah, like even with the whole COVID thing, the initial response was not great, but I, you can't blame like, a single country for that. Like, pretty much all countries sucked when it came to the world and everything. But, you know, the, the US achieved you know the vaccination rates it was one of the first countries that vaccinated a large portion of its population it has a huge army and you can feel the american cultural sphere uh everywhere i mean the the presidential elections of the u.s it, it almost feels like it's a, a a global election at some point because everyone it's following the, the election it's just impressive well, there's a lot to admire action across the globe in this video, we'll take a look at the five top reasons why you wouldn't want to go against the U.S. military establishment. America! The United States Air Force is the strongest in the world. Of course. Not only in the number of operational aircraft, but also in technological superiority. The country currently operates a total of over 15,000 military aircraft, Ooh. combining all the branches of the military service, including the U.S. Navy, U.S. Army, Coast Guard, and the U.S. Marines. As of 2017, the U.S. Air Force alone has a fleet of over 5,300 aircraft, 406 intercontinental ballistic missiles, and 170 military satellites, greater than any other country in the world. The USA has the largest That's number massive. of stealth aircraft designed to be silent killers and untrackable by the radar defense systems of most countries in the world. Some of these stealth aircraft include air superiority fighters, such as the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, heavy bombers, such as the B-2 Spirit. In fact, the United States pioneered this technology in the 1980s with the introduction of the F-117 Nighthawk stealth attack aircraft. Stealth aircraft are designed to avoid... God damn, dude. They would, have, they would have loved this video in the 80s. They would have sent... Uh, this video to the Soviet Union over and over and over again. Detection using a variety of technologies that reduce radar reflection from ground, sea, or air-based radar antennas, thereby reducing its radar cross-section, or RCS. This revolutionary technology allows a fifth-generation aircraft, such as the F-22 Raptor, with a max takeoff weight of 83,500 pounds, to have a radar cross-section of just 0 0.0001 meters squared. I don't know what any of that means, but it sounds strong. It sounds American strong. About the size of a bumblebee. What's more insane is that the massive B-2 bomber also has the same radar cross-section as the F-22 Raptor. Thus, it becomes extremely difficult to track stealth aircraft. Even if the enemy spots them on their radar scopes, it's a whole other story to successfully track them and register a missile kill. The whole idea behind this technology is to break the chain in which a conventional surface-to-air missile defense system works. It's the same reason countries like China and Russia are also hard at developing their own stealth fighter, the Chengdu J-20 and the Sukhoi Su-57, respectively. These aircraft will allow the US Air Force to assert its air superiority over any battlefield of the future. And we all know that control of these skies is the biggest decider in any war. The next reason why any country going to war with the US military should think twice is because of the strength of the US Navy and its dominance over the world's ocean, yeah. especially the Navy's supercarriers. The US Navy currently operates 11 nuclear-powered I mean, I don't know which country could come even close to defeating the US. At least on paper, the US has by far, and I really mean by far, the most impressive army. 
not even close. Like even China, even Russia, like they don't come close to to having what the U.S. has. It's massive. It's it's monstrous. They spend. I think they spend like legit half of Mexico's GDP on the army. I think it's like six hundred. Uh, tri- no billion, right? Six hundred billion. You you guys can correct me if you're American and you know what the answer is. Uh, you, you can correct me obviously in the comments, but it's it's imp- huge. It's we can't even think about how much money that is. Nimitz class supercarriers, which is the largest aircraft carrier fleet in the world. Nimitz, the only navy that can like come world close world in terms of technological advancement is probably the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom, but they only have two operational carriers. The Nimitz class of carriers has a displacement of over 100,000 tons and can carry a complement of up to 70 aircraft. They're literally a floating small town in the ocean yeah, with its own airport. airport yeah. The Nimitz class carriers in themselves are extremely potent offensive weapons, but the way they operate in what is called the carrier strike groups makes these ships even more deadly. A carrier seldom deploys alone. There are always a fleet of surface and underwater assets surrounding them and forming a strike group. These include guided missile cruisers, a destroyer squadron, attack submarines, and other support vessels. (laughs) Together, they project the power of the carrier and at the center of the group forward towards the enemy. While the carrier is carrying out its offensive role with the use of its air wing, the other ships are responsible to protect its flanks against any enemy attack. This combination of offensive and defensive strategy makes the US carrier strike group almost impenetrable. The United States Navy maintains nine such carrier strike groups, eight of which are based in the United States and one that's forward deployed to Japan. For over 50 years, this has been the principal element of US power protection and the Nimitz class of supercarriers are at the center of it all. Despite this, the US is currently in the process of developing a new class of carriers called the Gerald R. Ford class, intended to replace the Nimitz class ships. This new supercarrier will be even more technologically advanced and is expected to continue US dominance of the oceans well into the late 21st century. The third reason why you shouldn't fight the US military is their massive stockpile of nuclear and conventional yeah, intercontinental... Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's, <laughs> that's enough. You know, you don't need four other reasons. I think that reason alone would probably make sure that 95% of all countries in the world won't mess, won't mess with you. It's probably more like 100%. Ballistic missiles or ICBMs. The ICBM plays the role of the land leg in the US nuclear triad along with the Trident submarine-launched ballistic missile SLBM and nuclear warheads carried on long-range strategic bombers. ICBMs are launched from ground-based missile silos, achieving high suborbital spaceflight approximately 1,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. The body of the missile then separates from the warhead, which re-enters the atmosphere and free-falls to the assigned target at hypersonic speeds. The U.S. military currently operates 400 ICBMs from its base in Wyoming, Montana, and North Dakota. The LGM 30G Minuteman III is the only type of ICBM that is currently operational in the U.S. The Minuteman III family of ICBMs were first developed in the 1960s as a response to the Soviet nuclear threat. Throughout the Cold War and beyond, these missiles have undergone constant modernization. In the last decade alone, the US military has undertaken $7 billion worth of upgrades. The rocket propulsion engines, the propellants... I think, I think that's alone, that's the like the Mexican military spending like $7 billion. The guidance system and even the flight control surfaces have all been refurbished. The upgraded missiles are completely different from its 1960s counterparts, except for the shell. These state-of-the-art improvements and modernization programs have kept the Minuteman 3 system operational for over 50 years with improved reliability that supports the missile's remarkable 99% alert rate. The latest versions of the missiles have a range of over 8,000 miles, which is greater than the diameter of the Earth at 7,917.5 miles. They can carry multiple 330 kiloton nuclear warheads, which is 20 times greater than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Not only that, each of these warheads can be assigned to different targets independently. The technology is called Multiple Independently Targetable Reentry Vehicle, or MIRV, and was first developed for the Minuteman 3 family of missiles. 
So any country messing with the United States will have to deal with this awesome arsenal of firepower, which can be launched at a moment's notice. If it weren't the ICBMs or the stealth fighters raining fire down on you, it would be precision-guided munitions, or better known as smart bombs or PGMs instead. This is another big reason why not messing with the US military is a good idea. All branches of the US military use smart bombs in some forms or the other. These weapon systems are designed to be precise and hit a specific target with maximum efficiency. Ooh. These bombs are so effective well, man, that during the first Gulf War, dude. PGMs comprise. I mean, it's it's fucking insane. That's that's what this is. This is fucking insane. Used only nine percent of weapons fired, but accounted for seventy-five percent of all successful hits. Since then, for the U.S. military at least, the days of normal artillery shells and unguided bombs are long gone. Nowadays, the military uses PGMs from air, ground, and sea. Precision guided munitions come in various forms and use different kinds of technologies to achieve precise hits. A large majority of PGMs use the global positioning system or GPS of satellites to guide their trajectory to target. However, sometimes this becomes a problem as GPS coverage is not always reliably available everywhere across the globe or bad weather conditions can hinder operations. Thus, the Office of Naval Research, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, and the Army Research Laboratory have all coordinated to develop the first ever artillery-fired smart munition that will not use GPS guidance. The project is known as Moving Target Artillery Round, or MTAR for short. The MTAR shell can be guided onto stationary as well as moving targets in both land and sea, using a combination of guidance technology. The best part wow. is that these shells can be fired from the existing M777A2 155mm towed howitzer and the M109A7 Paladin Integrated Management self-propelled 155mm artillery systems already in use by the US military. The shells will also feature an extended range of 40 to 60 miles using rocket boosters to propel them. Once finished, it will afford the US military another potent weapon system yep, that outclasses others around the world. Lastly, the fifth and final reason why you shouldn't fight the US military drones. is drones. We're all familiar yep. with what an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone is and what it's supposed to do. But in recent years, the usability of UAVs are steadily increasing to encompass all spheres of military operation. I think there's a lot of drones on the US-Mexico border. You know, to control the, the whole illegal immigration thing and there's people who like spot the drones and they like taking pictures of the drones every time they see them and the US military is the pioneering spirit behind it at first use only for surveillance missions drones were quickly weaponized after the 9-11 attacks and have been extensively used by the US military in the war against terror as an offensive yeah. weapon platform you know and talking about this and the whole Afghanistan thing you know I would love what's your opinion I don't want to get political and if it ends up being political then I'm you know just pretend I didn't ask this question but so it's a pretty delicate situation. It, it, it's fucking crazy. I just heard that Afghanistan just changed this flag. They changed the name of the government. I mean, it's literally a new country. It's forecasted that over the next decades, the U.S. is in line to purchase over 1,000 combat drones of various classifications. Some of them, like the Lockheed Martin RQ-170 Sentinel and the Boeing MQ-25 Stingray, are already in the final stages of development and once finished, will provide the US military with state-of-the-art platforms capable of multi-role operations, ranging from attack missions to aerial hero, refueling. Man. Drone technology has reached such heights today that a single UAV can loiter miles above the surface of the Earth for hours, waiting for the target to show its head and sticking with impunity. This capability will allow all the services under the US military to reduce its dependency on manned platforms, thereby reducing the risks during future combat operations. These five weapon systems make the US military extremely dangerous for any adversary looking to get into a conflict with them. In yep. a conventional warfare setting, it's almost impossible to beat the US military machine. That's why modern enemies of the United States are employing more and more asymmetric warfare strategies against the mighty US military. 
Despite that, the US military juggernaut is hand down the most powerful military complex in the world today far, yeah. and There's probably no will be for decades to come. That's all we have for you today, folks. Thanks Ooh. for sticking. My God, dude. America flexing its muscles, man. Dude, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's fucking. It's a badass military. And... Okay, look at, let's look at this first comment. Low living in America and reach the age 25. I come to realize that the enemies of America lie in America itself. God damn it, dude. I shouldn't have read the, that comment. Uh, well, that was pretty cool.